Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part six of King Saul. Get your King James Bible. Turn to 1 Samuel and chapter 23, verse 1. Now, uh, there's a city there named Kela. And uh, I guess they're, they've harvested the, uh, the grains, I guess, wheat or barley or whatever. And uh, the Philistines, the Canaanites, came down and they're robbing, you know, everybody harvest, you know, uh, threshed the grains, the wheat or the whatever, the har barley or whatever. And... Um, so they're coming down there to uh, steal the grain. You know, they let Israel do all the work. And then they go down there and they're stealing all the food. So, let's, with that in mind, let's go. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Keilah, and they rob the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Killah. Wow. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Killah against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord yet again, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise. So the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kela, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hands. So David and his men went to Kela and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David, slay, uh, so David saved the inhabitants of Kela. So they... Uh, took the cattle of the Philistines. So, you know, there's two types of cattle. Did you know that? There's uh, milk cattle, and then there's beef cattle. So maybe there's a mix. I don't know. Either way, they're going to get milk or they're going to get beef. Verse 6. And it came to pass when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Keilah, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. Uh, remember, he was the, the son of the priest that uh, Saul, King Saul, had murdered, had murdered. And the ephod was a thing for the priests, uh, some kind of a religious article. Verse 7, And it was told Saul that David was come to Killah, and Saul said, God hath delivered him into mine hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that hath gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Killah to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abiathar, the priest, Bring Hither the ephod. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah, to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant, and the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Kilah deliver me and my men unto the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about 600. Now remember last time there was about 400. Well, David got another 200. Um, in the U.S. Army, a company of men is about 200. So this is about 
three three companies three companies of men our US Army size anyways a uh, battalion is usually four companies uh, you know eight hundred to a thousand people well fall you know David's got 600 that's that's pretty good size number of people he's starting to get an army here then David and his men which were about 600 arose and departed out of Keilah and went whithersoever they could go and it was told Saul that David had escaped from Keilah and he forbade to go forth verse 14 and David abode in the wilderness and strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph and Saul sought him every day but God delivered not and God delivered him not into his hand so God was protecting David well David's gonna be the future king And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also Saul my father knoweth. How do you like that? Jonathan loves David so much that he is willing to be his second in command. But uh, that's not how it works. And we'll find out later. And they two made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came up the Ziphites, to Saul, to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the wood, in the hill of Hakilah, which is on the south of Jeshimim? Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. Boy, these people are something. Here it is, David killed Goliath, and these people want to betray the guy that killed Goliath and helped save Israel. And he just helped Keilah, uh, the Philistines fight the Philistines at Keilah, right? Yeah, no good deed goes unpunished. Verse 21. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. What Lord is that, Saul? Is that Satan? Verse 22, Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know and see his place where his haunt is. And who hath seen him there? For it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. Where his haunt is. H a u n t. Uh, that's a that's a term they still use today, right? Verse twenty three. See therefore and take knowledge of all the lurking places, where he hideth himself. And come ye again to me with the certainty, and I will go with you, and it shall come to pass if he be in the land. I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the plain of the south of Jeshinnom. Saul also and his men went to seek him, and they told David. Therefore he came down into a rock and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. 
But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. So, you know, here it is. Saul's actually got to do what he's supposed to do as king. Protect the land, right? Get the army and protect the land against the Philistines. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place Selah Hama Likoth, something like that. Sorry, I didn't take Hebrew in Bible college. And David went up from thence and dwelt in strongholds at Engedi, or something like that. 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, Behold, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. You ever heard of mountain goats? Boy, those things can almost uh, climb on a almost vertical wall. They're amazing. And he came to the sheep coats, by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. So evidently, uh, David and his men are in the cave, and Saul has also went into the cave, but, you know, David and his men were hiding, and they're hiding on the sides of the cave. Verse 4. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it seemed good unto thee, then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. Now that's the deal. David could take his sword and cut the skirt off Saul's robe privately. Now if you can cut off their piece of clothing, you could have just as easily cut off their head. David's making a point here. Verse 5. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. You see, the Lord had anointed Saul to be king. David didn't want to kill Saul. He didn't want to do it. He knew the Lord had, you know, appointed and anointed Saul to be king. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Behold, this day... Thine eyes have seen how that the Lord hath delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee, but mine eye spared thee, and I said, I will, no, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor 
transgression in mine hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. As saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceeded, proceedeth from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? That's right, the king of Israel, why are you coming out against me? I'm a dead dog. Are, am I a flea? A, you know, what are you coming against me for? You know? The Lord therefore be judge and judge between me and thee, and see and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thine hand. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, then Saul said, is this thy voice, my son, David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dealt well with me, forasmuch as when the Lord hath delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if, a mind, if, for if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house. In other words, uh, when you become king, please don't kill my, you know, all my family. And of course, him and Jonathan are very good friends, so this will be an easy promise to make. And David swore unto Saul, and Saul went home, but David and his men got them up unto the hold. So they, uh, even though, um, even though Saul went his way, they were, uh, they were going to hide because they don't trust Saul. Because you know what? Saul's going to change his mind. Again. I'm sure. You know, Saul was... When Saul knew that uh, David could have killed him and that would have been the end of it, he felt bad. But you know what? I have a feeling he's going to change his mind again. All right, well, this is the end of part six, and um, we'll see what happens in part seven. Now, I already did uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25 on the study called The Fool, because David and his men asked help of a fool named Nabal. So that's going to be on the playlist too, but where that leaves off is where I'll continue. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, and God the Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen.